Miss Penny from Kid Vision Pre-K, and we're here today to find out what a marine biologist does. Let's break the word down. So let's talk about what marine means, what biologist means, and what a marine biologist means, what you do. I'd like to start with you, please, if you could tell us your name. My name is Keith Herman. I'm the senior aquarist here at Gumbo Limbo Nature Center. And what does marine mean? A marine is the study of a saltwater environment, so that will be something like the ocean. And your name, please? I'm Whitney Crowder. I'm the sea turtle rehabilitation coordinator. And how about biologists? That would be the study of life on Earth. And please tell us your name, and what does marine biologist mean? I'm David Anderson. I'm the sea turtle conservation coordinator here at Gumbo Limbo Nature Center. And a marine biologist is one who studies all life in the ocean or in other saltwater environments. So what specifically do you do? I take care of the fish here in the aquarium, so we make sure they're happy, healthy, and well-fed. And I manage the sea turtle rehabilitation center, so I'm in charge of all of our rescues of sea turtles, all of the rehab and releases of our sea turtles. I monitor all five miles of Boca Raton's beaches for all the sea turtle nesting activity that takes place. We look for evidence that sea turtles came out of the water overnight, and we mark the location of the nest and protect them all the way through and until they hatch. What motivated you or inspired you to pick your field of work? My parents like to tell me a story that when I was little, uh, they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up and I told them I wanted to be a killer whale. I didn't quite make killer whale, but taking care of fish is pretty close. Well, my family used to spend vacations at the beach all the time, so I was very interested in uh, all the activity that was taking place along the beach. So when I was in college, I began studying sea turtles, and then when I moved to South Florida, I began volunteering at Gumbo Limbo Nature Center, and now I get to work here and protect the sea turtles on our, that nest on our beach. And how about you? Ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to be a voice for animals, and now I can be. Well, I'm very excited to be at Gumbo Limbo to learn more about what marine biologists do. And we're going to spend a little bit of our day with each of you so that we can find out more about what you do. Sounds That's great. great. Good. I think we're going to start on the beach. This is a turtle nest. So our team sees the turtle tracks in the sand where the female has dragged her heavy body out of the ocean up onto the beach to deposit her eggs in the sand. And we follow those tracks up to where the eggs are and we proceed to mark the nest accordingly. About how many nests are made during nesting season? We have three species and it'll all add up to about a thousand nests by the end of the summer. She comes up and she lays her eggs. She will return back to the water and she will go and rest and, and, and feed and forage and sleep and, and for a couple of weeks and believe it or not, she will come back and lay another nest. The same female turtle may lay multiple nests in one summer. So she may lay four, five, or even six nests. How many eggs are in each nest? Each nest has about 100 eggs in it. So that's like 600 eggs from one mom. Exactly. We must have a large turtle population. Well, turtles are endangered species and we must uh, do what we can to conserve uh, the turtles and of course protect the nest. And when the babies come out, how many of them make it to the water? Well, of the 100 eggs, normally about 90 of those 100 might hatch. Most of them might actually make it to the water, but once they get into the ocean, there are a lot of predators out there. Mm -hmm. But some of the things that might prevent them from getting to the water are some of the predators that are on land. We do have foxes and raccoons, but one of the biggest problems is artificial light pollution. Hatchlings use a glow in the sky to find their way to the ocean. Oh, because so they think it's the moon. They think it's the moon, the stars, and all that reflecting uh -huh. off the water. But now, unfortunately, the glow in the sky is occurring over land. So the turtles come out and they're confused and they may actually turn around and go towards oh, the dunes no. instead of the water. So how do you mark a nest so that people know not to go near it? Well, we have on our nest orange stakes around it and we have an orange ribbon marking the perimeter of where our best estimate of where the eggs are. And we put an, a yellow sea turtle nest sign on the front of our nest. So when people are going up and down the beach, as you can see, you know where the nest is located and know to, to stay clear of it. Are there other things that people can do to help? People can prevent light from shining onto the beach at night, whether it's uh, outdoor lighting at your home or not using a flashlight on the beach. It's very important to keep our beaches nice and dark at night. We can reduce the amount of plastic we use. We often find turtles with plastic in their stomachs, particularly what we call post-hatchlings, turtles that have hatched out of the nest 
gone and lived a few weeks out in the ocean and unfortunately consumed lots of tiny bits and pieces of plastic. Uh. They become sick and weak and they wash up on the beach. And sometimes beach goers just like you may find one and call us and we will take it into our rehab center. We also treat turtles that have been struck by boats and we have turtles that are just sick, like we get sick, turtles get sick, and when they are well, we release them back into the ocean. Perfect, I would love to see the rehabilitation center. That sounds great, look forward to taking you there. All right. Right now we're in the rehabilitation facility because we're gonna find out about this turtle. We have a marine biologist with us and a veterinarian, and they've been working on this turtle, trying to make her well. So let's find out what was wrong with her and how she's getting better. So this is a green sea turtle, her name's Gamora. And when she came to us, she was very thin and she was sick. And she had tumors on her, on her flippers and her eyes and her shell. And they get a disease called fibropapillomatosis, which you can call FP. How do we take off the tumors? We have to take them to surgery, and we have to cut the tumors off. And I see you have FP honey. What is that for? Well, FP stands for fibropapilloma. We use honey to help wounds heal. So we rub honey all over that wound, and then we'll leave her out of the water for maybe 10 minutes and let it do its job. Let's talk about her body parts. What is she checking now? See her eyes? Her eyes. Making sure she doesn't have any tumors on her eyes because tumors like to grow in their mm -hmm. eyes. And the tumor can get so big that they can't see. She's a sea turtle, so she's underwater. And she has a nose, so how does she breathe? They have lungs just like we do, so they actually breathe air. And that's why turtles oh, sometimes end up here, because they get, they get hit by things like boats when they come up to take a big breath of air in the ocean. Okay. We're gonna lift her up and look at her underside. Because she had tumors here, you can see scars. She had a big tumor here on her shell. The shell is bone covered by a layer called keratin. It's like their skin, so they shed it, and they have feeling in their shell. How, how big is she gonna get? She's gonna get very large, up to 400 pounds. As a marine biologist, you're studying these turtles, and so what are you learning from this particular turtle? Well, we've learned that this, um, this disease is very, very common in green sea turtles, and all the signs point to dirty water as being the source of why they're getting sick. What can these children do to make things better for the sea turtles? Well, you can try not to use so much plastic in your house. You can buy a water bottle that you can fill and refill, right? Use little containers that you can wash. We want to use plastic or metal or glass that we can use again and again, right? Because some of our turtles eat plastic and they get very sick. After you've treated a turtle and you feel like they're getting better, what, what's the next step? Well, we look at different things like if they're gaining weight, we take blood and make sure they don't have signs of infection. And then we decide they're healthy enough to go back out to the ocean. Do you treat other animals besides turtles? We have fish, which I don't specialize in treating fish, but I did do surgery on one of our puffer fish ones to remove a hook. So you have an aquarium here yes, also. Yes, we do. I think that's our next stop. How fun. Yeah. Thank you so much for Bye. telling us about rehabilitation. You're welcome. Bye, Bye Gamora. Gumbo Limbo learning a lot about what marine biologists do. It's so interesting to find out how they rescue and take care of rehabilitate turtles. What do you do here at the aquarium? So all of our fish are from the wild. We call them ambassadors for their wild cousins. Not everyone is able to go out into the wild to see these beautiful animals. So we are recreating their environment here so you can come and enjoy them. What kind of fish do you have here? This is what we're calling our coral reef tank. So we have a lot of reef dwelling creatures, including wrasse, parrotfish, angelfish, tangs, and our large eel that might come up and eat for us here. I hope the eel comes. Me too. All right, who's your helper? This is Brian Danson. He's the other half of our aquarium team here at Gumbo Limbo. He and I take care of the aquariums and keep the fish happy and healthy. And what are we feeding them? Small silverfish called capelin and pink shrimp from the Florida Keys.
Are you guys ready to help us feed some stingrays? Yeah! We're gonna feed them one at a time just to make sure that everybody gets a chance. We're also gonna keep track of who's eating so that we know that everybody's had a chance to eat. Mr. Brian's gonna give you some fish and we're gonna get you to feed them. Thank you very much for showing us how to take care of fish and how to feed them well and so that they live a long natural life here and other people can see who they are. You are so welcome. Thanks for visiting us. Today we were at Gumbo Limbo learning about marine biologists. What do marine biologists do? Take care of animals that live in the ocean. That's right. And how can we help them? By not using more plastic. That's right. Thumbs up for marine biologists. Great job. Thank you. Bye.